Welcome back everybody, this is James White with Freak Interviews and today is my top 10 picks for my favorite items that I reviewed in 2021. I had to sift through almost 200 items I reviewed this year to come up with my top 10 favorite picks. The only criteria I used for this video was that the items had to be reviewed by me in 2021, so they may not be new items, but they're new to my channel. Without further delay, let's get right to my top 10. Let's start my top 10 with a very stupid item. And stupid is not my word for it, it's theirs. It's the stupid car tray. This is an interesting device. It actually is just a tray that sits in your car on the passenger seat. It has legs on one side, not on the other. So where most passenger seats have an angle, this flattens it out so you can put food there, you can put a pizza box, all kinds of things. It's one of those things that once you have it, it's kind of hard to go back without it. It hasn't just been me. I've got a lot of good input from viewers as well. I think the stupid car tray is a great way to start off our top 10. Check out some scenes from the original review. It's the stupid car tray. Feet on one side and not on the other, and it creates a level surface. So when you have things in the passenger seat of your car, they're not going to be tilted. So some of the other features, it has Velcro straps around it to hold food items in place. A couple of miscellaneous holders here. There's a cutout for your phone charger if you want to put your phone in there. It even has bag clips if you want to have some storage bags on there for trash. So normally if you're in your car and you have pizzas, you put it in the passenger seat, it's, it's at an angle. So the legs on this side gives you a little boost on the lower end. You can also strap these in place. I can see delivery people really wanting to use something like this. That's not good, not good. Let's put the super car tray in there. That seems much flatter. Let's see what the angle is here. It's almost completely flat. This is the stuff of nightmares. And this is what I would probably use the stupid car tray for the most. You can put your strap right through the center there. Take kind of a quick corner here, see how this goes. Whoa, big speed bump too. Normally you would have been probably wearing these drinks by now, but it, it's certainly doing what it's supposed to do. But my thought is the stupid car tray works pretty well. Number nine on my list is the quick flip. This is a hoodie that was featured on Shark Tank and not only is it a hoodie, but it's also a backpack. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna like this one, but I've actually used it quite a bit this year, especially when traveling. I can put it on the plane if it gets cold in there. When I get to my destination, I can convert it to a backpack when I'm out shopping. I would say it's a good hoodie and I would say it's a good backpack, but together they make a great product. Here's some scenes from my original review. Welcome back everybody. Now today I'm taking a look at a product called the Quick Flip, which is actually a hoodie that converts into a backpack. Actually, I'm reviewing the Quick Flip and it's actually a backpack that converts into a jacket. All right, it's, it's a comfortable, it would say medium weight hoodie. Um, the material feels good. The stitching looks nice. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. Now I think the trick in this is you're supposed to actually take it off inside out. So you, when you pull your arms back, you kind of go through just like this. And then at the bottom, there is this pouch right here. And you're supposed to just kind of reach in and just grab whatever you can grab and just pull it through. And then just kind of stuff everything in there and then you should have, if all goes well, it all went well. We have a, uh, we have a backpack. It's not real heavy, it's not uh, uncomfortable. It feels, like, it feels like a standard drawstring backpack. So the jacket takes up about that much. So you still have a little bit of room there. Well, the conversion back is very simple. All you do is just pull it through. But let me see what I can put in here. I'm gonna try a few different things. We got a bottle of water, a, a small tripod, an extra hat from Hawaii, phone in the pocket, uh, even some tea. I've got a lot of stuff in here. This is getting kind of heavy. Let me put it on now. All right here, this feels, this is like a duffel bag full of stuff here. All right, how's it look? Look good? I'm ready to go. I really like this. I've already planned to buy this as a gift for a couple people, so to me, the Hero Hoodie by Quick Flip is a great product. This is the second of my car gadgets in my top 10. This one came from last July with a collection of car gadgets. This is the Varsk tire inflator and car vac. I actually found this to be kind of a solid car vac, tire inflator, and tire gauge. So it looks like a, a typical car vac, but it also can inflate tires and works as a tire gauge as well. So I found that it combines all those elements quite well into one unit. My son has been keeping his car. It's come in very handy a few times when he had a slow leak recently. Plus keeping his car clean, it actually serves multiple purposes and it does them both well. Here's some scenes from my original review. Forward for vacuum and pull back for inflation. There's also an LED light. It feels like a normal car vac. I don't, it doesn't seem much better than any other car vac I've used. You know, based on how much hair there was, that's not so bad. Dog hair, man. So much dog hair. 
All right, the inflator is very simple. Just attach one end. I'm gonna go 36 pounds. Hit it. Nice, chef on its own. Sweet, it worked. I like when things work right the first time. Number seven on the list is actually a rather unassuming looking ice cream scoop by Z-Roll. Now, not everything on this list has to be a crazy gadget. Sometimes they just have to work well. In the case of the Z-Roll, it does. I did a comparison of ice cream scoops earlier this year. It actually performed the best of that bunch. I would say it's better of all the ice cream scoops I've used over the years and not just the ones I've compared on video. Not only is it durable, has an ergonomic design, and makes really nice ice cream scoops, I just think that it has one task and it does it quite well. Check out some scenes from the original video. Zero feels really nice in my hand. It's very solid. I can get a nice, perfectly round scoop. Look at the scoop. Zero scoop looks it looks pretty good. I would say for a quick round one, Zero took the prize. Something about the shape of this just it seems like I'm having the easiest time making a nice round scoop. I don't know, man. I just think the Z-roll just goes quicker. I just like it. I like the Z-roll. I've just found the Z-roll and the Thrifty to still be my favorites. But as far as my test goes, Z-roll is on top. Number six on my countdown is this automatic wine opener. This is something that's been requested me over the years. I finally got around to it. I'm glad I did because it works really well. Not only does the foil opener work really well, but the wine opener does too. And not only does it pull the cork out, but it also dispenses it back to you. This has immediately become a staple in my kitchen. So check out some scenes from my original video and you can see why. I'm gonna see how this wine opener does with all five of these wine bottles. Remove the foil cutter. All you really have to do is just place it over here, squeeze it, Make a couple of rotations. It came right off. I like when things worked well the first time. That's the opening act. Now it's time for the star of the show. All you have to do is place the opening of the electric wine opener over the wine bottle and press the button. Oh wow. Oh, it's coming right out. Look at that. Oh wow, that was, that was very easy and very quick too. Wow, that's, uh, <laughs> I like when things work the first time and that worked beautifully the first time. I'm kind of a fan of this one. Number five is the Stir Crazy Popcorn Maker. I did a comparison of popcorn makers earlier this year. Not only did, it, did I think it was the best of my comparison, I've used it quite a bit since then. I think I've actually transitioned off microwave popcorn to use this from now on. I like it that much. There were some other good ones in that bunch, but this is the one that I felt was the best. Check out some scenes from the original video. For a half a cup of popcorn, I have to add two tablespoons of oil, which I'm gonna do right now. Half a cup of popcorn. They say to make it kind of even, so I'll do my best here. So next up, placing the cover on the base. Oh, that is kind of interesting, isn't it? Oh, we got our first pop. We got our first pop. The bowl is very steamy now. And now we're going here, huh? There's steam coming out of the top here. Wow, that was kind of quick. All right. Now, got to shove the lid on quickly. They say I do this as fast as possible. Put the lid on. Make sure the handles are aligned. They are, it's not too hot, it's not. Turn away from yourself. Lift off. And here we go, nice big old bowl of popcorn. Still need salt, but the oil adds something already. I actually quite like this one. Number four is kind of a big one. Let me grab it here. Ugh. It's the Shack Smokeless Grill. I did a comparison of this one versus a George Foreman grill a few months back, and I thought they both did really well. I was really impressed by the fact that Shack's kind of a newcomer and was able to do not only do well against the Foreman, but in some cases outperform it. Uh, it's definitely gotten some use around here, and I'm very happy with that purchase. And a lot of people that have purchased this have also told me that they liked it as well. So here's some scenes from my original Shack versus Foreman grill, where you can see why the Shack 
made my top 10. Take a look at the front panel of the shack. You have an on-off button here. This button allows you to turn off the upper plate if you want to have just the lower. The time temperature setting here, and you can turn the fan on or off. Shack is interesting because the bottom grill just actually, it seems to hover. It's kind of just floating there. All right, nice sizzle. All right, shack is good to go. A little bit of smoke, hit the fan. Gone. The Shack Burger is slightly juicier, maybe because the George Foreman is so efficient at getting rid of the grease. George is a little drier. The Shack Grill has a auto shut off while the Foreman doesn't. The Foreman handle also gets hot while the Shack's doesn't. So to me, Shack wins round number one. All right, Shack's a four minutes, let's see. Oh, that looks nice. I'm gonna take it out of there. All right, that looks actually quite nice. Nicely toasted, there we go. The Shack wins round number two. Beautiful sizzle. All right, George is done. I think uh, Shaq's about done too. Shaq over here, George over here. Over here is the Shaq upper grill versus the Shaq bottom grill. Looks like the Shaq bottom grill chars better. George the opposite, upper grill seems to char better than the lower. Either way you look at it, Shaq won two out of the three rounds. So to me, Shaq wins the competition of Shaq versus George. Number three on my list is the Circle Water Bottle System. This is a bottle that actually has flavored pods that you can insert in there. You get up to six uses per pod. The bottle itself was not very expensive. I actually just got another batch of refills right here. If you're someone who struggles to drink enough water throughout the day, this might be something to consider. I'm actually a big fan of the Circle, and here's some clips from my original review so you can see why. This was about 50 bucks, but they gave me a 10% discount because the, the more you buy, the more of a discount you get. So it was about 43 bucks for all this. These are what they call sips, and they have different categories of sips, and I have, I believe, one from each. All of their sips, I believe, have no sugar and no calories. Fill the bottle with water, put on the cap, insert your cartridge. There's a dial here that you can go from more flavor to more water. And I think you can go straight water all the way to the highest flavor. I believe it's nine settings. But all you really have to do to use the circle is to fill it with water and insert your cartridge. So you just insert it in there, that's easy enough. And this can close up and be drank out of. All right, let's start with number one. Hmm, a very mild peach flavor. Let me see number two here. Hmm, that's, um, there was a pretty big jump from number one to number two. I think by number nine, you're just drinking solid concentrate at that point. Number five, kind of get this little sensation in the back of my cheeks, that's pretty strong. Number nine, which is way too much. Hmm, well, there's definitely a difference number nine. Whew. I'm gonna go way down to three. I'll try that one more time. It's funny, after number nine, number three just tastes like water. But I will say, that's pretty good. All right, here is my very subjective ranking of these six sips. The Brew Sip Coffee, number one. The Fit Sip Mixed Berry, number two. The Tea Sip Peach Tea, number three. The Go Sip Black Cherry, number four. The Pure Sip Unsweetened Pineapple, number five. And very respectable last place is the Life Sip Fruit Punch. I didn't dislike any of them. I will, I'm going to drink all of these. I'm surprised it's as good as it is because I've seen so many overreacting TikTokers and YouTubers. You never know if they're just hamming it up for the camera. I don't think they're hamming it up. I think it's actually that good. My number two item of 2021 is actually an item that's so big, I don't even have it here. It is the countertop dishwasher. This is something that I had a lot of requests for. I finally got around to doing it and I did a lot of research trying to find the, just the right model and I think I did. The Novet countertop dishwasher far exceeded my expectations. It performed as well as a full-size dishwasher in a fraction of the space. Obviously, it's not something that everybody has a need for, but for those who do, I thought it was a great choice. Check out some scenes from my original Novet countertop dishwasher review. All right, I think we're good for now. And, and we're off. And don't forget to put that in the sink, otherwise you might be uh, dealing with some dirty water on your countertops. I do like the fact that you can look in there with the window. A lot of these countertop dishwashers don't have that. That's one of the reasons I like this one, because it, it's just kind of fun to look at it. Let's take a look and see how the, how the dishes came out. All right, almost good. This one had a bunch of stuff caked on it. Let's see. Oh, it looks, looks great. This one looks fine. It looks pretty clean to me. Clean, clean. 
I think all the silverware looks pretty good too. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a little nightcap all together. I'm gonna let this sit 24 hours. Come back tomorrow and load them up. Let's take a look. Ooh, wow, that is caked on there. This is gonna be ugly. All right, so that one's that one's ready to go. I'm not expecting this one to do better than the full-size dishwasher. I don't even know if either one's gonna get that oatmeal off. The plate. Well, look at this. I don't see anything on the plate at all. Wine glass. Beautiful. And whoa. I think it did better than I expected. I'd say it passed the flying colors. I can tell you this Novet base in the couple weeks I've used it is probably a good choice. Before I get to my number one pick, there was a couple of items I thought belong in this video but didn't quite make the top 10, so let's take a look at some honorable mentions. This interesting looking gadget is the pocket tripod. This was done way earlier in the year on a phone gadget comparison I did. Now, it almost looks like a fidget spinner. It's one of the more pe peculiar items I've actually reviewed it over the years. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna use this one, but it's been in my wallet ever since then. And not only has it held up from that, but I've actually used it when I'm traveling, like on the airplane. I use this to hold my phone up. It's actually been quite useful. Check out some scenes from my original pocket tripod in my phone gadget comparison. It can be folded in a variety of different ways to hold your phone with or without a case. As far as rotating it then, you can put it this way to kind of leave it in place. It's not gonna go back anymore. Or you can turn it this way and tilt it back. 45, yeah, maybe, up to uh, about 90. I have a pretty good selection of angles with it between using it this way and using it that way, I think. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I don't know why you'd want to film at this angle, but you could if you wanted to. So there is another way you can use this. What you do is you turn it to this configuration, pull them apart. Now you have two halves you can actually place further apart so you have a more stable base for your, uh, your phone. This is really good for an extreme angle like that. Putting it back together, just the reverse. My honorable mention would not be complete without this cheap Hamilton Beach toaster. I only paid 15 bucks for this one. I did a comparison of cheap toasters earlier this year and this was the one I picked as my favorite. Not only did it perform well, but it was actually one of the cheaper toasters I reviewed. Check out some scenes from my original review. Today I'm doing cheap toasters. Hamilton Beach, this was $14.96. Purchased at a Walmart store. It smells like toast. There we go. Very light. Very light. Going right in the center, number four. And let's do it. See what happens. Nice and warm. Well, here we go. Here we go. That looks more like what I think medium should be. I'm, I'm a little bit impressed by the evenness. The $15 Hamilton Beach coming through in the clutch here. We are all the way maxed up to number seven. Here we go. Okay. Okay. Hamilton Beach, I'm quite happy with. It's, it seems like for 15 bucks, it's actually quite consistent. All right, Hamilton Beach. I'm putting this one also at the nine o'clock position, which is number two. And... We're off. All right, let's see. Well, it still feels a little bit flimsy. Round two. I guess it's pretty good. Yeah, I guess it's acceptable. If I had to choose, I would personally go with the Hamilton Beach. I really think for 15 bucks, the Hamilton Beach is actually a pretty good deal. This is actually a neck reading light that I had quite a few requests for. And when I tested it out, I actually found that I liked it. It's pretty versatile and it actually lasts quite a while on one charge. I've actually used this one quite a bit, surprisingly. So this one actually kind of surprised me at how useful it really was. Check out some scenes from my original video. Uh, this is a, one of the highest rated items I've ever seen on Amazon. As of this filming, it's got 36.7 thousand reviews, 4.7 star rating. Amazon's choice, I have a lot of requests for it. All right, so there's buttons on either side. So you can actually control these one at a time. You can go low, medium, high, off, low, medium, high, off. And there's also a button way back here, which changes the color of it. You've got, it's kind of an amber, like a warmer light and a cooler light. So you have low, high. Well, that's very bright. It works quite well. Yeah, I can read this fine. I don't even, I don't even need my reading glasses, which I might need when, if it's kind of dark. You can adjust it like this. You can adjust it like that. It pretty much adjusts at any angle you want. You can make it really wide, you can make it narrow. 
I should also point out that there's models out there kind of similar to this that use batteries. That makes them much heavier. You actually have to either put rechargeables in there or you have to pay for more batteries. This is very lightweight. It feels like almost nothing on there, but it doesn't feel cheaply made at the same time. Usually lightweight means cheap, but in this case, it doesn't, it doesn't mean that. It, it just feels lightweight. I think this is the warm light. That's the cool light. I think I like the warm light the best. Wow, I mean, I, so far, I'm very impressed by this so far. Well, it comes down to this, my number one pick for 2021. The choice itself was pretty easy. The only hesitation I had was that the same company had my number one pick last year. But looking back at the products, this is the one I have to pick for number one. The Ninja Foodi Never Stick Pan. I mean, look at this thing. It's almost like a cast iron skillet. It's heavy, it's durable, it's even heating. The non-stick surface is great. Look at that surface. It has held up beautifully over time. The price is right for this. I just don't have enough good things to say about this pan. I think that anybody who buys this pan will be quite happy with it. But let's take a look at some of the scenes from my original Ninja Foodi Never Stick Pan review. It's a nice looking pan. They say it features a hard anodized surface. Cast stainless handles. Four and a half inch millimeter aluminum base exclusive non-stick coating it's pan versus pan hex clad versus the ninja never stick they put a tortilla on top of it and some down there uh, let's try the ninja now oh wow look at that whoa wow i'm actually i'm actually quite shocked that's i don't think the hex clad did that well the first time I've done this test a few times, never seen this good of results. Very happy with that. All right, granite stone pan is done. Let's try the dump test. Oh, okay. Okay, all right. So we got burnt marshmallow stuck in the bottom of the Ninja, burnt marshmallow stuck in the bottom of the granite stone. First, I'm gonna do the granite stone. I'm gonna say it's not as good as it was originally. Oh yeah, look at that. Lovely, very lovely. It's a nice demonstration of the nonstick surface. All right, well, it didn't stick in the bottom, that's good. Oh, look at that, nothing. Very impressive. Oh, not bad. Just testing this out, it just slides right around. That's very impressive. No oil, pretty good. Okay, well, released quite nicely. Oh, that's ready to flip anyways. It released very nicely, look at this. Very easy. Very nice. Next up, always pan. All right, here we go. Time for the flip. Oh, very nice. I just checked the internal temperature of these with my trusty thermometer, and the Ninja is considerably warmer than the always pan. The always pan is going to take a little bit longer. But my overall opinion of the Ninja Foodi Never Stick Pan after two weeks of daily use is it is an excellent pan. Well, that's my top 10 for 2021. It was an interesting collection of gadgets. It was an interesting year, really. But I appreciate everyone who stuck with me over the year, and I hope to see a lot of you again for 2022, and we'll see what next year brings. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.